I um, want to end with one story about, um, well, two, uh, sorry, one, two, <laughs> two. One story is that mom, when she decided that she would be, um, have her ashes scattered when she was dying, at first she wanted to sit atop a hilltop with a great view. She said, you know, like a cow peacefully chewing cud, chilling out underneath the skies. And, and, uh, and then she decided that she wanted instead to be um, thrown into the ocean. She said, how else am I going to get to all of the places that I love and see all of the people I love? And the moon was for her a, a, a symbol of connection because um, the moon was everywhere the same and for everyone, which is not always true of the skies and the stars, but you know, the moon... Um, was therefore a unifying, you know, an illuminating force. And I learned this incredible lesson. I, it was, it was uh, um, uh, maybe three years ago, my daughter was sick, Suhela was sick. I have a two-year-old, Savita, too, but she wasn't with us then. And I heard this gigantic crash and uh, I came out into the kitchen, and what had happened is the cabinets, this is a couple years ago, had just basically fallen over, just fallen right over. I'm not sure if it was shoddy construction or if I had just weighed them down too much with, with stuff, but the, everything was broken except, I believe it was a Lilo and Stitch cup. Everything was broken. Mom's wedding plates, plates that she had brought from Spain when she went for a conference there, um, teapots from China and Japan, belonging, I think, to my husband's family, as well as, you know, antique Chinese um, pots that mom had collected on Jalan Surabaya in Jakarta. They have the markets. Um, really wonderful stuff that because mom was gone, I never used, right? Because I wouldn't want anything to happen to them. So <laughs> it was a sort of terrible sec, like 30 seconds. And I, then I realized, guess what? That my daughter, Suhela, who had gotten to be a big girl, who was three, was sick on the couch. Normally, because it was after dinner, she would have been helping to wash the dishes, and guess where the sink was? Right underneath those cabinets. And the weight of those cabinets would have injured her gravely, perhaps even killed her. And it was the fastest I've ever gotten over anything in my life. I looked, and I was like, oh, destroy it. Oh, that's cool. Let's clean up. I was so cheerful. I, was, let's, I realized I didn't really need those things to remember my mother or my grandmother who would... Um, die shortly thereafter, um, that what I, what I did need was, you know, I needed good stories, and I needed to be able to share stories to, um, to connect them, and that in those shards, everything, you know, nothing, it was all the same. It was sort of blended, right? There were, there were no boundaries anymore in the shapes, and the, it was, um, it was uh, everything was just a, a mess. <laughs> It took us hours to clean it up, but it was the greatest gift, um, that moment, uh, one of the greatest gifts of, of, of that year. And I'm reminded, I'm going to read a poem to you. It's Rumi, the Persian, the Sufi. A light in the same place are ten lamps. They all vary in shape, but gazing at their collective light, you cannot tell which light comes from which of the lamps. In the realm of the spirit, you find no partition whatsoever, no individuation, nothing, fana. So that fana means like void or emptiness, but it's a noisy emptiness. It's a bountiful one, right? As everything is destroyed, we find somehow, so in this economically challenging time, 
we find a means for rebuilding stronger than before through our stories, which you have shared with us tonight. And uh, I'm, I'm proud uh, to know you and to hear more. And thank you very much. Thank you guys. Nice. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. So Maya, we, um, we're so grateful, firstly, for sharing your incredible stories Thank you. and the deep way in which that power of interconnection runs through your personal history and through your professional Come life. Come here, sweetheart. I'm coming right here. Right. So we have, some, we have a number of questions from the audience for you this evening, so I'm going to try and get through as many of them as I can. So a lot of them refer to mothers and daughters. And the first is, what experiences, conversations, or characteristics of your mom most inspired your creative and professional direction? Definitely uh, her, her uh, love of stories. She shared with us um, stories from all over the world. I was trying to think about stories of her own. She did certainly have stories of her childhood the aforementioned clouds and skies and trees, national geos and that sort of thing. But she was, I think, um, proud to be a collector of stories. Um, the fact that um, uh, she homeschooled both my brother um, and she homeschooled me in a, in a big way. I was homeschooled till the seventh grade, basically. And she, I think, therefore inspired uh, not only the desire to tell stories for children, but also the um, the teacher, the teacherly stuff in me. Um, she did a great job of it because it was all about curiosity. It was all about uh, exploration. We had this book called Look Under Rocks, and we would look under rocks for lots of bugs and things, um, she, which is something that my six-year-old Suhaila now also does. We also had a telescope, and we would. she loved astronomy. She was tremendously curious in every direction, and it was about taking a thing, an idea, a concept, a desire to its, uh, uh, to its uh, depths and lengths, and, um, and I think that that is what made me want to uh, become a teacher. So a related question, which is, um, what of your mother's characteristics do you have? Um, and if you feel comfortable answering this, what characteristics of your mother does your brother have? Um, I think we both have some of the same thing. He just takes it to a different level <laughs> than I do. She was very, um, she was definitely a bridge builder, as is obvious probably to you right now. She was, um, she was a really imperfect woman. I don't want to over-idealize her because then you might think that you don't have mothers that are just as, you know, fine and just as powerful. She was kind of, you know, messy about parts of her life. She never in spite of her continued optimism, had healthy romantic relationships and, you know, that sort of thing. And I mentioned that just because there is great power in recognizing our, our mothers, their, their bounty and their gifts, as well as their faults, and beginning to uh, understand their stories in a more multidimensional way. Um, I'm not going to include that in a children's story because that would just... What's the purpose of that? But, but I think what you begin to see in her children is this desire to have um, a best alternative to perfection, <laughs> a desire to compromise if compromise is necessary, a desire to negotiate um, and to keep reaching across the aisle, even when doing so is really hard, and even when people are not being nice, 
they're playing nice. And um, I think that uh, her optimism and her continued faith in human beings uh, is something that is present in the very best of um, my brother's ex extraordinary leadership.